Outside of Misha Lay, Tony Braxton, and the Clark sisters, Lifetime is bad at making biopics. And I'm a huge fan of Lifetime movies. But one movie set Lifetime biopics back and gave them a bad rep, and that's Aaliyah, the princess of R&B. Even before filming occurred, the movie was met with a ton of backlash. For one, the lead was supposed to be Zendaya, a biracial 17-year-old from Disney. She voluntarily dropped out of the running, and that would be a good decision for her because had she stayed on as Aaliyah, we'd probably never see her as Rue on Euphoria. She would be recasted by Alexandria Shipp, who had a quiet yet decent run in Hollywood. Another issue they had was the lack of family involvement. Basically, they just copy paste her Wikipedia and maybe watch her behind the music episode, something I can do with more justice and effort than they did. All you gotta do is ask in the comments below if you want an Aaliyah video. Third, due to her greedy uncle, hardly any of her music could have been used. How can you make an Aaliyah biopic without her music? Anyway, I'm gonna do y'all a favor and cover this film, and trust me, rewatching this film was a pain. So without further ado, this is the abomination known as Aaliyah, the princess of R&B. Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. The film starts off with a young 10 year old named Aaliyah Halton performing on Star Search. She obviously doesn't win because that's what famous people do. Name one famous person that won Star Search. Right, there is no one that I know famous that won Star Search. This only dampens her spirits temporarily as her uncle got her a gig in Vegas with Gladys Knight. Things go well and her uncle decides to give her a record deal. The film then quickly fast forwards to her high school years as she prepares for a talent show and performs an underwearing version of My Prerogative. Thanks to connections from her greedy uncle, she meets, records, and produces with a man who I'm only referring to as The Creep, who is played by Clay Bennett who is known for his voice roles in the Total Drama series. One thing I'll praise is that the actress Alexandra Ship is trying as a singer, but she seems too confident, and Aaliyah was a very timid singer if you ask me. The creep then starts to flirt with 15 year old Aaliyah at a pizza restaurant saying he did his homework on her. No, I did my homework on you, right? And every time I see her with the creep, I want to throw up. They record At Your Best, and the only reason Lifetime had access to this song because it's not hers, but instead a cover of the Isley Brothers. The result of these recordings is Age Ain't Nothing But A Number, an album that didn't age well at all. Because of the creep, I can't even listen to this album. For the first time, things get near intimate when the creep almost kisses Aaliyah. Hey, Aaliyah. Her brother believes that she and the creep are more than just friends. Aaliyah then hears her song back and forth on the radio but we don't hear any of it because of the reason I mentioned earlier. This film also makes Aaliyah very naive, especially when she's around the creep. He orders her to wait until she's 18, but she can't wait another minute like a high five record. So the couple illegally marry, and upon finding out about this, this leads her father to illegally strangling the creep. Her parents are against it, and forces an annulment, and orders the creep to stay away from Aaliyah. Aaliyah goes on a depression over this as she is not pleased about her parents taking the creep away from her. Months go by and Aaliyah is reluctant to do another album because the creep had his hands all over the previous. She gets over it and meets up with two up and coming producers in Timberland and Missy Elliott and they don't look nothing like them and not to fat shame anyone, this Missy is at least 100 pounds underweight and light skinned and Timbo is at least 70 pounds underweight. They play her a beat that appears to sound like four page letter, but the beat is booty cheeks, like this entire booty. <music> Meanwhile, Aaliyah is scouting Hollywood and is immediately shot down as women of color can't lead a mainstream movie. She would let her get a lead in Queen of the Damned, a bad movie but Aaliyah herself was good. We then have another instance of Aaliyah music not being used because she was covering Marvin Gaye and at this point I want this movie to end. Another thing I want to mention is that throughout this film it shows that she can't get over the creep. She gets upset when she finds out that he moved on and married one of his background singers. 
Another issue I have is the scene involving her performing Journey to the Past at the Oscars. This was one of the few songs Lifetime was able to use. In reality, Aaliyah was very nervous during her performance and it shows. In Alexandria's ship version, it felt like she showed too much confidence to the point where she's over singing a bit. And to be fair, this song does talk about finding confidence and it builds as the song progresses, but this might be a nitpick, that's all I'm gonna say. Aaliyah and her mother then have a convo about how she need to find a man and she confesses that how long it took for her to get over the creep. But one positive thing from this film is that years later, Surviving R. Kelly came out on Lifetime and this film might have served as some inspiration. Aaliyah goes to a party and meets Damon Dash, who will later get finessed by Jay-Z, the two bond and starting their relationship. Now she's happier than ever like a Billie Eilish tune. And to wrap up this travesty, Aaliyah flies to Miami and then to the Bahamas to shoot Rock the Boat but sadly, we know what happens after this. She left New York a person and came back a spirit. All in all, this movie was in still booty cheeks. Don't even know why this was allowed to become a thing. The acting was bad, the story was bad, the naivety of Aaliyah was atrocious, and the lack of Aaliyah music was disheartening. So no, if you haven't watched this movie, don't. It's that bad. And that concludes Aaliyah, the princess of R&B. I do want to take the time and apologize if I came off negative on this video when I'm mostly positive. Hopefully this doesn't scare you from liking and subscribing to the channel. Maybe someday Aaliyah will get her just due. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.